In the middle of August, the NAMAC diecast event was held in the Netherlands, as it is about every two months. I went there, as I almost always do, and I bought a bunch of stuff. This is part one with the uh, kind of toy grade collectibles. And then part two will, all the, uh, will be all the uh, premium stuff I got. I thought we'd start out with all the trucks and vans and rigs and lorries that I got. And then we get to the passenger cars. So this seller had a bunch of these uh, FC made in Holland vans and trucks for sale for five euro each. Uh, I got this one because, uh, well, you know, it's a police van and it's a Citroën C35 FC Holland scale 168. Well, that's not going to be accurate. A metal on metal, huge trailer hitch. Blue window piece makes for the blue cherry on top. Sliding door with the police sticker on there. Uh, I have an older version of this. Where is it? It's on the other side. Um, older, I mean a, um, a version in worse condition. But uh, as you can see, that older one or that worse condition one does have the police sticker on this side. And then I noticed that there's kind of a line there can see it there that indicates that there was a sticker there too so kind of got uh, spoofed on this one uh, should have had a sticker on this side too so it's not uh, complete so I definitely overpaid for that uh, oh well you win some you lose some I always say uh, at least I got a nice uh, mint version of that casting now uh, the next seller also had a bunch of FC as you can see here but what caught my attention first at his table was this uh, Siku set. It's a, uh, a Unimog with motorboat. Um, he was asking eight euro for it. I picked it up, looked at it, thinking, you know, I'm not really inter interested in the trailer with the boat. I'm just interested in the Unimog with the, the canopy on there. Um, so I put it back on the table and then he said, you know, uh, let's make a deal. I don't know if he suggested five euro. I think he did and I said, okay I'll take it for five. That's what I'm willing to pay for the the vehicle on itself So let's open this up Add it to the Unimar collection I'll keep the uh, I'll keep it like this to show in the Unimark video Get some uh, tempos in the front for the Mercedes star and the headlights. And nothing else tempo-wise. And uh, the canopy comes off. DLRG. For the life of me, I could not tell you what that means. Maybe there's uh, some... Uh, this is possibly German, so maybe some German people can tell me, can tell us in the comments what that uh, actually means. Um, not going to spend much time on the uh, trailer. It's got two axles, it's metal base and then a plastic boat on top of there with the engine that kind of uh, moves around, I guess. I'll uh, show it loose, the trailer that is, in that Unimog video. Got a lot to look at, so let's continue. And then he had a, um, a kind of a... Um, open box tray that's the word i was looking for an open tray with all fc stuff in it started looking at it and he immediately told me i can make you a sweet deal on those um, and he did and i got these for a steal uh, this one um, he was asking six and a half euro for i got it for two euro and 69 cents this is a I believe a Commer van, but in a French postal service livery. Not seen a, uh, a French livery before on these. Commer 302, there you go, FC Holland, so metal on metal again. Uh, yeah, very interesting. That is, uh, it's got Commer embossed on the rear there. Some details for the taillights. 
that this has a French Postal Service livery. Unfortunately, it's got a little paint chip there, and he had two of them, so I could have probably picked up a mint version. But as I've told many times before, at Namak there's so much stuff to see, and so little time that I just have to try to make a deal, grab the stuff, and just go to the next one. There's just no time to inspect these for, uh, for uh, yeah blemishes and stuff like that just got a crack on then we get to the a bunch of these uh, Mercedes uh, rigs this one was a little bit cheaper than the other ones I already have an example of this but I knew mine was uh, or is not mint and this obviously, obviously is in the packaging, or at least I assume. So, uh, PTT, Telecomunicasi, so Post Telegraph Telecom, Telecommunication, that's what it stands for in Dutch. And these have uh, plastic or maybe vinyl. Uh, tires gets opening doors in the back and there you go the plastic box everything else is metal you can see the Mercedes star in the grill there basic interior not even a dashboard or a steering wheel so the one I have was missing uh, a door in the back um but now I notice that this one does not have the trailer hitch interestingly uh, that's interesting um this one has the toy grade wheels this one has the more authentic looking uh, truck wheels and uh, interestingly my uh, older one it's also has which also has a few flea bites has an antenna on the roof which the, the other one doesn't have so quite some differences there interesting so kind of cool to have uh, both versions of these. Maybe I should find uh, a, uh, a beat up one, metal wise. I mean, but that still has two doors to try and switch out the door. But that'll probably never happen. Put that back and these funky uh, packagings. Let me get to the more expensive ones of these. Nine and a half euro. That's uh, quite up there. Why is that? Because uh, I think these are a little bit more rare. They are a um, kind of a merchandise item, it seems, for a, uh, a supermarket that I think delivers to your delivered to your home because I don't think they exist anymore. Or maybe it was just a, a kind of. A, a vehicle that came to your home that has had groceries in there and that you could go into the vehicle to do your groceries I don't know I didn't look it up um, but uh, it, uh, this in Dutch literally says shop at home but again not sure what uh, it really stands for so it's got the same box no need to show that with open doors you already seen it on the green one and then we got the gray version here, same price. Van Gent and Loos was a uh, well-known uh, trucking uh, transport company in the Netherlands that uh, uh, does not exist anymore, I think. Uh, this was stapled shut with uh, two rusty staples. Got these off beforehand to go a little bit quicker again not a lot of different not having the um, the uh, trailer hitch like the, the previous ones either there you go and he also had uh, these uh, tractor trailer combinations I um, think he had like five of them uh, two of them he did not want to budge much on the price 
I didn't even think they were that interesting either. This one, he said, was um, hard to come by, and I believe him because I've never seen it before. But what really drew me to it is that it is a Volvo. So I don't think I've ever seen a, um, a Volvo FC. So that, uh, yeah, that really uh, made me want to have it and, uh, you know, got a sweet deal on it. Asphalt bitumen. Uh, nice wheels, by the way. Proper rig wheels, like uh, it was on that, uh, that one uh, Mercedes in the PTT livery. Made in Holland by FC Toys Heerlen. It's the, the, the city or town where they were, where they had a factory, I guess. Okay, cool. So, nothing on the back. Seems like a, a cut card. Should have had that stuff on top of there. Let's take a look. Let's see. So, okay, that's interesting. This moves. Wow, that's that's pretty cool. So again, a Volvo N12, 187 scale, FC Holland. So white metal base, black metal cab, plastic uh, grill piece, and also these fenders are plastic, unfortunately. So the headlights look kind of goofy. I uh, wish that would have been metal. Got an uh, orange cherry on top. It's always nice to see. And then here in the back, uh, this part here, this shiny black is metal with the uh, fenders and the bumper in the rear and then this partial uh, base part here is metal. Then the, the tube itself, the tanker, this plastic says the same thing on the other side um, and I think these come off by twisting them in a 90 degree angle possibly yeah yep there you go so it's yeah, kind of a, a hook system a little bit of plastic flashing there just comes right off Cool. Kind of like that uh, swiveling uh, rear axle. Guess kind of adds to the uh, playability of these. Although nowadays, of course, they are considered collectible and uh, not really toys for kids anymore. Uh, this is an interesting packaging. This is basically two packagings glued together to make a two pack. So you can see here in the back, it's got this line here. So there's basically two single blisters that are glued together like that, kind of overlapping on the, the blisters overlap the, the two cards, kind of adding uh, or helping to, uh, to keep both of them together. That's really funny. So yeah, these were uh, cheaper than the Volvo, but they're not that exceptional. I most, mostly wanted it for this one because it's in an FC Toys livery. I always think that's cool and you can get a, a truck with the um, Diecast brand's name on it. This one's nothing really special, but you know, it comes with it and was cheap, so why not? Let's see. Let's start with the top one. Unpunched card, so yeah. Some people might hate me for opening this up. A 
Well, let's get the other one off too. And there you go. This one does not mention Mercedes at all, but it does have the Mercedes star. A cool rims too, uh, different than what we saw before. So that is interesting to see something different on these uh, uh, on these wheels. Got just this uh, plastic tube that is loose on there, and uh, this is also plastic. Just the um, the more dark red part is metal on the base there. And here we got the one I was really interested in. This one's got the toy grade wheels. It's interesting that they put um, different wheels on these being in the same packaging. Got black doors in the back. Let me see. So these Mercedes have uh, dual axles in the back um, on the tractor. Well, the Volvo had a single axle. And then a different seller from whom I bought some uh, Mini GT in the past. He had some now too, but um, nothing within my price range. But he had these, first time he had these um, German merchandise uh, like um, rigs, tractor trailer combos, um, a little bit more expensive than I uh, have found them in the past. I found them as cheap as one euro, but there weren't any interesting ones in there. Uh, this time I looked for some uh, Iveco, as I always do. I used to work for Iveco and I still uh, uh, try to find some uh, Iveco stuff here and there. And he had some and uh, in an interesting uh, livery too. Uh, this is a uh, Michael Schumacher collection edition. It's got uh, the um, licensing sticker on there. Um, so Michael Schumacher collection under license by MSM, Motorsport Marketing. In the back it says Collect all of the trucks of season 2005 in German. So the uh, Italian GP, uh, race number 15, it says. And it's basically celebrating his uh, seven world championships. And it's kind of cool that uh, these. Uh, were released in 2005, I assume, because it's uh, it's all about the 2005 uh, races. And this one themed in the in Italy. Uh, that uh, he never won another uh, world championship ever, ever since. So all seven of them are on here. Uh, now I've mentioned before I don't know anything about racing or F1. So I did some research to, you know, be a little bit informative. So in 94 and 95, he raced for Benetton. 94 was a um, F1 car with a Ford engine, 95 with a Renault engine. And then uh, 2005 to 2004, he won uh, the World Ch Championships in a Ferrari. Um, it's got the, uh, his signature on the door here and uh, his name underneath. Got some extra details on there. It's uh, nicely done. Nicely done front end too, tempo wise. The Vico Stralis. Uh, and then I think these detach by just pulling them. I think these are just cheaply made uh, Chinese ones. Adtruck.de, made in China. But uh, yeah, good enough. Definitely for the price. Even like that they. Uh, Painted the sun visor black. Uh, some issues here with the uh, the wheels in the rear, it seems. Or maybe not. Oh yeah, this one is. This wasn't 
fully on the rim. But they're kind of, yeah, rubberish. Nah, they're more vinyl tires. A little bit loose axles, but you know. It does the trick. No, no opening doors in the back. Same deck on the other side. Yeah. Interesting. And then I got another one. Uh, this is from San Marino, also 2005. Basically, same, just different uh, colors and livery. Well, not totally different, but somewhat. So we got a, a silver painted tractor this time. And then uh, similar livery on the back, but with San Marino on there. Cool. And I got two of these uh, merchandise ones for German breweries. They are Iveco, of course, but they also have a, a trailer there. This is kind of a, a booze booth that it's pulling. I thought that was interesting. Nothing on the back here, just some uh, info on the merchandise company. So this is from uh, München, Hofbrau, refreshing, fine herbs, a beer with character. So this has some uh, Veco information on there. Although not much. So these are stickers, these uh, advertisings on there. This is an older type Iveco truck, rig, lorry. I think this was called the Eurotech. This was before my time at Iveco. Uh, less details on there. You know, the sun visor is not painted black. Possibly a different uh, Chinese manufacturer. Uh, no opening doors either, but you got some door details on the back. And then the booze booth. It's got this uh, opening uh, awning. That's cool. It's all plastic though. But the uh, uh, these are um, these are definitely rubber tires. Yeah, they look kind of a hard rubber, but more rubber than vinyl. Vinyl on these. Oh, it's got two awnings. Look at that! Wow, that's cool. Yeah. I mean, it's very basic, but still, I think it's fun. Oh, this pulls out all the way. Look at that. See? Yeah. For the money, detailed enough, I'd say. And then we got this huge one. That's got a lot of uh, things going on here. Leuwenbrau. A beer like Bayern, just the same um, same province as uh, BMW. We got some other merchandise that they uh, they have or had. Probably will all be gone now. So we got uh, a little forklift, we got a trailer with some uh, beer cans and crates, and then we got the actual rig. Oh, cool.
That's got a good weight to it, I have to say. It just says made in China on the base. Yeah, these are definitely final tires. Mm, this one has opening features too. Look at that. Can uh, put some stuff in there too. Um, I think even the back opens up. Yeah, it does. And this side too. Mm, nope, this one's glued. See, there's no hinges in the back. So we got the Iveco Stralis again. Got the uh, beer brand on the roof there on three sides. Nicely detailed. Although not a lot of details here on the doors or anything. But again, for the, for the price, good enough. Nice chrome rims too. Then we got the trailer where um, all the stuff has fallen out by now. So maybe I'll keep that plastic part. So also two sides that open up as displayed in the packaging. So you get some of these uh, big beer cans. Not sure I would call these. Uh, and I got these crates, just beer bottles in them, ready for you to use. And there's room for one more, and that one is on the little forklift. I just uh, can just slide it on there. It's all plastic. It's got a driver in there, tiny wheels. Uh, this thing, it doesn't go up or down, you know, but you know, for that kind of money, you can't expect that. But it's just realistic looking because you can have it uh, slide that thing in there like that, and it fits. See? It's just. Perfect, really. How sweet is that? That's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Continuing with some um, trucks. Well, let's continue with the stuff I got from. Uh, Tom's model autos. There's a few cars in here. Now let's put these in the front first. And let's first look at these. Tractor trailer combos, continuing with the theme. Um, I first bought all the premium stuff that was on the table and there was a few boxes in front of the table as always. I asked uh, if there was something interesting uh, three inch or 164 scale. I was told probably not, but I looked anyways and uh, I found these uh, Maisto uh, transport haulers. And I've seen these before and they were cheap and got them for even less. Die cast and plastic. Uh, they come from Germany, Bauer. As a kind of, I think the uh, is or was the uh, German uh, Maisto importer. All licensed stuff, of course. That's how Maisto rolls. Let's get these open. Uh, there was only three of them and I took all three. Uh, this is probably the most interesting livery, Ford racing livery. I have no idea how these are in here. And if I will be able to get them out in a uh, a good way, they are. Oh yeah, the cardboard is taped up, but the plastic is not. It just has this little lip that folds over to hold it together. That's very clever. Let's 
a bit like uh, Siku does things, like that. I will keep them in the box. Uh, I will throw them on the ground for now, just for avoiding space issues. But I will put them back in there. It's easier to keep them in there. If they are resealable, resealable I will, uh, I will keep them. So let's see, Maisto made in China. It's got a little uh, kickstand here. Uh, I don't know how these come off. I think you just pull. I'm not sure though. Mm, no, I'm not sure at all. I don't want to force it. Um, I'm not sure what if this is a Ford tractor or not. Got some paint for the uh, the air horns on top and the lights. It's got a smokestack and crow on this side. Rubbers are plastic. Uh, rubbers, the tires are plastic. It's got separate chrome, separate chrome grill. Nice chrome rims. These doors open up apparently, but I don't think I will be able to open them. Oh, I am. Okay, there you go. Not much to see in there. And then the second one has the same uh, tractor, but it's got the different uh, livery, Ford Racing also, but kind of different. Uh, so yeah, I'm not going to open that up. It's, you know, if you've seen one, you've seen them all. Basically, this is a Mountain Dew one, least interesting one for me. It's the same, uh, the same rig, it seems. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, and the plastic, the um, wind deflector is plastic, by the way. I did not mention that, but probably saw that with the color difference. And that's it. And these. Uh, also got these Welly Auto Drop boxes. Uh, there were a bunch of them. Uh, it, sa it says here in Dutch, collect all 12. Maybe all 12 will, were in there. Maybe I should have gotten them all just uh, for the fun of it, because they were cheap. But I already had the, uh, the other ones. Um, I had the cars, not these boxes. I think it's the first time I got these boxes, but I had the cars already in different packagings. So, what it says here in Dutch, a model car with purchase of one auto drop mix box. What was auto drop? Auto drop was uh, candy in a box. Kind of a plastic round container. And I think if I remember correctly, um, they would fit in the cup holder of your car. So you could drop them in your auto in the cup holder. It also came or it also often was licorice, which is a drop in Dutch. So kind of a double meaning name, I guess. Uh, these are taped up. Uh, they are a little bit dirty inside because these packagings are a little bit, uh, you know, not that good. I'm trying to uh, stay kind here. Um, Oh, it is opened already. Shoot. So I could have cleaned them. I thought they were taped up and uh, I was going to cut them open for the video. Oh, well. So, did not have this BMW X5 in black. Um, again, licensing for BMW on the box. Well, he does it the proper way. He even has the model on almost every side of the box. That's nice. Let's take a rug, a uh, microfiber, a cloth, I mean, and just quickly dust this off. Makes it just that more enjoyable to, uh, to look at. Right. So first gen 
BMW X5, no headlights done, does get the BMW logo on the hood or bonnet. And no uh, logo on the back, but we do get the taillights that wrap around the corner and the X5 logo. They always have a nice interior, these wellies, proper steam wheel and everything. So yeah, gotta love these chrome rims. I have several colors of these, silver and blue and green, but they don't have black. Here we got the Mercedes-Benz SLK 350. Again, got a, a load of different versions. This definitely is not open. Yeah, I was right about this one. Even got um, a version with the pullback engine and stuff, but it's just a simple roll it yourself version. Again, give it a little wipe down. <laughs> Maybe some dust in the interior too. So these have final tires too. Silver generic rims this one does get headlights mercedes star they lights mercedes star and the uh, slk 350 on there so mercedes demanding a little bit more than bmw and i like that proper steering wheel and good looking interior also got this gift from uh tom's with our letters Auto sculpt miniatures, handmade in Sheffield, England. It's a little bit smaller in scale. Not something I usually collect, but hey, it was a nice gift, so I'm going to show it. That's a pretty cool one, actually. Look at that. DMC DeLorean. Got a little bit of felt, felt or felt on the base. DMC name there in the grill, nicely detailed. That's pretty cool, huh? That's a nice gift. It was very nice to get that from them. And I also got this, a uh, Autos Premium Diorama, the uh, Nissan one, kind of the second Nissan one with all white vehicles. Uh, currently they have a sale on these. Uh, they are reduced from almost 45 euro to half price, 22 and a half euro, a little less. Um, yeah, that's a good deal. Um, so the other ones I already have, so uh, this is the only one that is on sale that I did not have yet. So I grabbed it. Got the uh, Nissan Skyline 2000 GTR Liberty Walk in there, the Nissan Skyline C210, and the Nissan Skyline HT 2000 GTX with the Fleet Street uh, flatbed hauler. Um, let's see, there's a copyright on this 2023, so there's possibly a 2024 release. Cool. So. If you're looking for some Hot Wheels diorama still, have a look at Tom's Model Autos. They are on sale. Then we get to some uh, loose vans and commercial vehicles. And then we're going to get to the uh, all, almost all car stuff. This is a Grell model. This is a uh, Eastern European Barkas. Let me check. If I can give you the uh, the full name of the model, I've written it down somewhere on my notes. Just have to uh, find it. Let's see. Oh boy. Oh, there it is. Oh, the, I did not write the model down. Just uh, Barkas is the is the model. I mean, no, it's the brand, but um, don't know what the model is. Uh, just a van 
Uh, Luni is a town in the Czech Republic, so probably just uh, some promotional for the for the town. Uh, this was in a bin, loose, and, and I got it for one euro. It's uh, almost mint, and uh, I won't ever pass up a, a gal for only one euro. Um, if I had more time, time I would have dug, see, rubber tires, I would have dug through the whole bin to see if there was more grill inside, but unfortunately, uh, as I mentioned before, no time for that. This one was just on top and I just grabbed it, paid for it, paid for it and uh, went on my way again. Nice. Uh, I've set my set a goal to get all of the, well, all of the, as many as I can, find affordably, less need buses from back in the day. Uh, this is the Leyland Royal Tiger Coach, made in England by Lesney. Um, it's got several price stickers on there, eight euro, and then reduced to six euro, it says Nu Zes, which is uh, Dutch for now six. I offered five and I got it. There was a little white dot of paint on the front window there. I got that off with a, uh, an X-Acto knife that I got from my buddy JK and uh, yeah so uh, this is a uh, pretty much mint uh, as I mentioned before five euro for a Lesney vehicle that is in a good nick that is a uh, fine and dandy for me this one was a different story different seller too this is the horse box uh, on top it looked pretty good nick underneath you can see it's pretty worn wheels are very uh, much played with or in played with condition i uh, pulled uh, almost the whole carpet from uh, uh, around the uh, the axle in the back and it uh, got some paint loss too but uh, the cab is very well protected by the plastic box so that uh, nice metallic green is still in a great nick as you can see, there are some animals inside. Uh, there were stickers on uh, the outside, but they have fallen off um, uh, when, uh, when cleaning. Um, so the first one said in Dutch, voor maar 9,5 euro, which uh, uh, translates to for only 9,5 euro, which uh, yeah, was like, uh, sure. And then on the other another spot on the vehicle there was three and a half euro so i was like what the heck is this so i put it back on the table you know if you can't decide on the price um well you know there was too much too big a difference between the two prices i was kind of i was kind of odd and then the seller said well how much do you want to get for it there's two horses in there i was, I was like oh really uh I said, uh, well, I'll pay two euro for it. And he said, okay. And then I got home. I got the horses out. It turns out one of them is a bull. And uh, yeah, and they came with two white horses, I believe, originally. Because they also had black horses, I think. But yeah, so definitely not what would have been in here. But, you know, these are kind of rare, these animals. So all in all, it's a good deal. Different seller, this majorette Mercedes garbage truck made in France, only one euro. It's got stickers still on both sides, got that nice peach cherry on top. The, there's a few paint chips on the, uh, on the metal, the green paint, but all in all, great nick for one euro. This one from a different seller was also one euro. The Mercedes-Benz Unimog 1300. L, I believe, is the full name by Hot Wheels. And this is a treasure hunt. So I thought a treasure hunt for one euro, even though I already, already have it, I'm not going to leave that behind. Now we get to the cars from my favorite German couple. 
I almost always buy something from them and this time was no different. Golf 5 GTI 2008 release, the main line in orange, 2 euro, fair price. It says GTI Fahrenheit on the license plate. That's interesting. Not to be confused with uh, the 2022 five pack version, which is kind of a mustard yellow and is the retooled version with the metal post in the back uh, instead of the plastic post on the original one. And uh, the newer one has my GTI on the license plate. A bit a different location of the post too and of course they have uh, retooled the base because they uh, needed to add the Dutch address on there uh, the uh, Mattel registers its copyrights in the Netherlands because there's only a one percent tax on uh, multinationals that's why a lot of big companies uh, regist register their uh, copyrights in the Netherlands, like, for instance, IKEA and other uh, big companies. Then we got two Kermit Green vehicles, the uh, Concept One Beetle convertible by Matchbox and a Metallico Metal Flake Green. This was also two euro. Uh, of out of the two. Concept Beetles, the, the, the one with the, the closed roof and the, or the hardtop and the one with the soft top down. Uh, this one is the best one because it looks the most like the uh, original release. Not sure why it says uh, uh, that on the back there. Um, is that a 10 or a 70? I don't even know uh, what, uh, what that means. But uh, back in the day you got a proper steering wheel. A nice interior, look at that. Yeah, got a smoked window, lens headlights, a bit of flashing here on the front, but hey, that's okay. I like the color combo, sweet. And they also had this uh, Siku VW Polo. This is a 1999 model, I believe, for Euro. It's a, that's a fair price for a car that's Siku. Uh, nothing interesting on the back as always. Volkswagen Polo, some stats on the vehicle, on the base, on the plastic base. Plastic tires, rims uh, are, um, I don't know, um, generic or authentic. I'm not sure, it doesn't have the VW logo in the middle. So uh, might be generic, but they look realistic. And I don't think they use these wheels a lot on other vehicles, so uh, yeah, not bad. Lens headlights, unfortunately, you can see the green behind it. Separate piece for the grill, got uh, all details on the grill there. Uh, okay, looking interior, five door version. Hatch opens up in the back, got the uh, red paint for the taillights. And unlike uh, Matchbox moving parts, this does open properly. You get the huge hinges because of that, but I mean, either you have opening parts or you haven't, okay? Make up your mind. Secret did the right thing. Then from a different seller, also a favorite of mine, his name is Rul. Um, I don't always buy from him, but every now and then he has good stuff. Bought uh, Matchbox from him in the past and Tomica, and this time he had some Tomica too. But we start with some Majorette he had. Majorette Lancia Monte Carlo, made in France. Paid 5 euro for this. Suspension, it's got headlights that are part of the metal base. Plastic bumpers, front and back, that are part of the uh, black interior. And then a white metal body in a uh, uh, Corsica Tour or Race livery. This is uh, 15, France, number 6, Tour de Corse. 
Guillaume apparently was uh, at the steering wheel. Got the sunroof in the open position, that's cool. And it's got these kind of flying buttresses in the back. Uh, hook assembly model, so the base clips into the body. Keeps it all together. Yeah, sweet. I did not have an example of this. Uh, it was uh, somewhere in a in a, a tray that was behind his table, but um, he presented it to me because he was looking for stuff he could uh, sell to me for an affordable price because he knows I'm a cheapskate. But we always uh, are able to uh, to make a deal and uh, that's uh, what I like about him. This carded majorette was also only five euro, imagine that. Oh yeah, by the way, I wrote down the years of these somewhere. Got to put my glasses on because, uh, you know, getting old. Let's see, where did I write it down? Oh boy. Okay, there it is. So the uh, Lancia Monte Carlo was a 1985 release. And this Mercedes, three Mercedes-Benz 300 TE, is the first release from uh, 1990 of this casting. Um, and the original typical strange blister made in France Fabrique made in France I already have this in my childhood collection in basically mint condition but you know me if I see a wagon that is affordable I can just leave it behind and definitely not if it's uh, as cheap as this. This normally would be like 15 euros or, or so. So it's got stuff in the back too. I don't know if you can see that. It's got an opening uh, lift gate, metal on metal, chrome grill, lens headlights, suspension, the whole nine yards, trailer hitch, cool stuff. I'm not going to open this. I have this loose, so no point in doing that. But what first caught my eye on his table was a Ferrari, a Tomica Ferrari. It's not in perfect condition. It's got issues. It's even an error because it's got chrome rim on the back here and then three gold rims on the other side. But it's got some issues here in the back. I don't know if that's zinc pest or if something was spilled on there, or I don't know, but uh, as I always say, never leave Ferrari behind. This is a 308 GTB. Uh, F38 is the number. F is, uh, stands for foreign, one to 60 scale. That is probably accurate because that's just how the Japanese roll. Made in Japan. That's the only made in Japan one I got for uh, cheap, meaning five euro. Got the other ones for five euro too, but those are made in China or made in Vietnam. 1977 copyright. So we get suspension. We get an opening part like that. We get a uh, plastic engine as part of the interior piece. We get this uh, gold that's uh, on the side with the Ferrari name. Cool, yeah, great find. Continuing with the loose Tomica I got from Rul, Lotus Esprit, made in China, 1979 copyright, 1 to 60 scale also. And my second Lotus Esprit I got from him. The previous ones I got from him were, were 6 euro each and they were made in Japan. Um, I got them for five and a half. This time he didn't want to give me uh, that good of a deal for the made in Japan one, ones he had. Uh, he was surprised that I got a, such a good deal the last time, but you know, uh, sometimes uh, yeah, I can get him to uh, cut me a good deal better than others, but I'm, uh, I'm totally satisfied with the deal I got now. Moving part on this, are the headlights Lotus on the uh, front there? Blue interior, 
So just embossed on the back there. Sweet. Also got me a minivan, the Nissan L Grand, 164 scale, 1998 copyright, made in China also. No suspension on this. Got a chrome insert for the headlights and the grille. That was kind of an era where they did that. Uh, nicely tempo taillight section here with the black around the window. Got some uh, roof rails also in black. And then it's got a plastic sliding door on the this side, of course, because it's uh, the right-hand drive, it's Japanese. And uh, there's some seats in the back there. Of course, there's a big cutout for the door, so that's okay. And then we get to the box ones. Toyota 86, 1 to 60 scale. This box is totally taped up. I mean with the, with the sticky tape and uh, not just the usual um, plastic wrapper that it is in. It's got that security thing in there. Uh, I see uh, 2013 here, so I'm assuming this is 2013 release. This one is open. Okay, work with me please. Yes, there we go. The stuff we already knew on the bottom there. It's got the more sporty wheels, suspension. Uh, totally tampoed out front end. Tampo on the side, opening doors. Some tempos on the rear. You got the tiny Toyota logo, but no uh, car make or model designation on the rear. Plastic spoiler. Nice. Going to put it back in the baggie and in the box. Because I'm going to run out of room on the table. So much stuff. Hyundai Veloster Turbo, 1 to 60 scale also. 2014 year on this. Uh, no wrapper around this or no sticky tape or anything. I saw one of these recently on the road. Always uh, something special to see because um, they did not sell in huge number. No, definitely not over here. Um, back when uh, Hyundai was still making a name for itself in Europe. Again, fully tampoed in the front. Well, except for a license plate maybe. And maybe some silver for the fog lights. Got some black for the pillars, got a plastic insert for the roof, which with some of these huge defroster lines that, uh, you know, uh, very exaggerated. This one does have the um, Veloster name on there and the you know, logo, the lights, but no, nothing for the, uh, the lights here on the on down there. And then the exhausts are just well, it's actually metal painted flat black. That's cool. Because with Tomica, you always get a lot of metal. They're a little bit more expensive, but you know, they have suspension. They have uh, uh, tampos, full deco, basically. And uh, nice weight to them because of the metal. And they use, make, or they do unusual castings that nobody else does. So that makes them interesting too. This one's still taped up, so we're gonna cut this open. The Lexus RCF 2015 year on this. 159 scale, a little bit larger. Let's see if we can yeah, unwrap this. doesn't want to give up without a fight.
Now this Lexus will probably have been done by other manufacturers. Can, can't come up with one now, but it's probably more popular vehicle to do. Again, suspension. This is in pearl white with a uh, kind of a dark gray metallic on top. Nice grill. Um, this is a separate piece, so it's plastic, I assume. I'm missing some paint down uh, down there on these openings. Other than that, it's not bad. Got the F on the side there. Some. This is a metal rear win side window. It's just painted black. They do that a lot on their models. That's why they have a nice weight, even though this back section is plastic part of the base with the uh, exhaust and the diffuser. Well, it's not really a diffuser, but... Spoiler. Again, it's a nice model. Then I got this one, the Tomicara ZZ. I didn't know it, unfamiliar to me. 2016 is a year on this. I did some research. Turns out this is the second gen of the uh, Tomicara, and uh, this is uh, an EV with about 300 horse, 225 kilowatts, I believe. Uh, yeah, cool addition to the EV collection. And, you know, I bought it because I kind of like the look of it, so. And something original again that you don't see from uh, anyone else. So the first Tomy Kyra ZZ was a, um, a Targa, and the, this EV version is a Roadster. 161 scale, suspension. So I can't compare it to the real vehicle because I've never seen one, but it seems to have a logo on there. Go past the stripe on top. Uh, no tab on the side. In the back you get the, uh, the car make name and the model on there. Some red dots for the taillights. Again, the plastic part here in the middle. Sweet. It's not ugly, but it's not beautiful either. It's just, you know, a roadster like roadsters look like. Something like that. Toyota FJ Cruiser 166 scale, uh, 2016 on this. A bit bigger box, possibly a bit bigger model. 166 scale. Always like to get me an FJ Cruiser. That's been a lot done by a lot of manufacturers. I had a bunch of different ones, so glad to have another uh, manufacturer or a car um, diecast brand that uh, did it. Different uh, wheels on this. That's interesting. Um, the bumper is plastic, but is a separate piece from the base, so it's. Uh, Possibly part of the interior. Got a uh, white painted roof. It's not a separate plastic piece. It is a metal roof. It is painted white and done a go good job on it. B pillars are painted black. And then the, the windows in the rear are all metal that is painted black. Because that's how they do things. Flat black painted rucksack wheel cover spare wheel cover and some silver in the middle some silver paint on the plastic bumper too all in all nicely detailed heavy vehicle yeah i like it it's nicely done i guess people fault them for not uh, having side mirrors and stuff but you know 
I like them. Then we get to some Norev. The first three I got from the same seller. Um, was able to make a deal on all of these. Was at the end of the show, at the end of the event, at the end of the swap meet. And often sellers are more willing to do a deal to just have to take less stuff home with them. This was the most expensive one, eight euro. He was willing to do five on it. That's about the maximum I want to pay for a Norev usually. Uh, this is a, a Renault Avantime, which is a, a quirky vehicle in itself. Uh, with some kind of a weird deck on it. I don't know what it means. Maybe we will get some wiser when uh, we get it out of there. And maybe not. Maybe we'll just have to wait for uh, Aurel Quirkypedia. The Quirky Garage 1999 on YouTube to give us some information on this comes with a little flyer in there i've shown this uh, many times before uh, lots of cool stuff in there well if you like uh, euro cars and if you like norev because you know they're not true to scale they're three inch made to fit the packaging uh, but they got a lot of stuff going for them and I love them. Nowadays the newer castings are true 164, but back then they were not. This thing is metal on metal. Suspension, authentic rims and chrome. Completely plastic top here, but the uh, original vehicle had a big glass roof too. A trailer hitch, which is odd on a um, for a diecast brand that never had a trailer. Uh, nicely done details. It's got some horses on there, some jumping going on. Sunset. Um, okay, a horseshoe with a horse head. Don't know the significance of delivery, but apparently it's special enough that it would sell for eight euro at normal price lens headlights no grill detail down here that's a bit unfortunate i would have uh, really set it off uh yeah and a good looking interior sweet it's only my second avant time i have first one was a uh, second hand had some scratches on the window so glad to have a a minty one for a good good price. And I got two uh, commercial livery ones. These were cheaper at normal price. I got a little discount. Luce Cru is a uh, French pasta brand. Um, just this year they did a collab with Majorette. And they did a uh, blue... Citroën de chevaux, a uh, Citroën 2, 2CV, in this uh, blue color in the Lustre Cru livery. So it's great to see that they still are doing these diecast collaborations. Um, that is cool. I like to see that. Doesn't happen that often in, anymore in other countries, but it seems like in France that's still a thing. That's awesome. This is a Renault Laguna. A hatchback version. Got uh, metal on metal, authentic rims, suspension, and lens headlights, whole nine yards. This one's got an opening part. The uh, hatch opens up nicely, how it should be. Again, a nice example of uh, how an opening part or a moving part should be. Again, it's got that silly trailer hitch. I see details on the rear, everything there, what you would want to have on there. Sweet. I think in France, you would probably pay a whole lot more for these. So I think I got a sweet deal. And here we got a uh, Petit Bateau liveried 
Renault Megane. I'm not uh, really very familiar with Petit Bateau. I think they are a store that mostly sell, sell stuff for babies. But correct me if I'm wrong. I mean like human babies. A little bit of, um, I would say, corrosion on the base. But, you know, you often see that on these Norev. Renault Megane 2003 model year. Again, the usual features. Again, with the silly trailer hitch. And the moving part on this one is the roof that actually comes off. I have a few of these. And I'm kind of glad to add another one. It's a... Uh, it's, uh, it's a really good model. Um, it's got a really nicely detailed interior because you know when the roof comes off, comes off, you gotta you gotta show what you can uh, do, and it's gotta look nice, right? So uh, I have the feeling that these convertibles have a, a nicer detailed interior than the other ones. Plastic roof, of course. And uh, let's see if I can put it back on there. It's got these pins in the back. So you just push down, easy peasy. Just like that. From a different seller, a German seller, I was surprised to find this uh, Volkswagen Sirocco. Three inch, so it's kind of huge. And it was only three euro. I was like, I'm not going to leave that behind. It's no rev doesn't uh, say it on here I believe because it's in a German sorry in a Volkswagen dealership packaging uh, but uh, yeah it's uh, not mentioning Norf at all let's take a look at it it's probably 155 scale or something pretty huge but a nice model nonetheless see it says Norif here on the base. That's how you can uh, establish what it is. A little bit of suspension, but these this has huge wheels. Very nice. These kind of uh, propeller blade style wheels. Uh, black exhaust part of the base sticking out of the back. Of course, it's got the lens headlights. Some silver for the uh, fog lights. That's a nice touch. I like that. Uh, these might be a little bit more detailed because they were dealership models. Um, VW logo there, but uh, no Scirocco name on the back. Apparently that was not required by Volkswagen. Um, no moving part on this, but that's okay. Nice one. The next one I got from Blondie in the discount tray. Uh, this was the only interesting one to me. Matchbox Collectors, one number one, uh, 10 of 20, sorry. The uh, 2021 Subaru BRZ or BRZ. You, uh, originally for sale for 10 euro, I got it for five. 2024 release. No moving parts on this, so questionable if it's really worth five euro but you know uh, it's much less than what these things usually sell for here uh, ugly drawing i mean what the heck is that that looks like an uh, off-road version of a uh, car that does not resemble a subaru brz yeah and the uh, blueprint isn't much better either Holy moly, this has a metal base. I take back my words. It, uh, it is worth five euro. I did not say anything. So if 
these collectors were always metal on metal with rubber tires. They would totally be worth the five euro. Yeah, that is awesome. Uh, so rubber tires, as I demonstrated, unfortunately, no open holes between the spokes. That would have been nice. Uh, full tempo in the front. Tempo is on the side. Almost a full tempo in the rear. The uh, third brake light did not get some red paint, unfortunately. And maybe some silver for the uh, plastic exhaust part of the, well, sorry, metal exhaust. I'm not used to this being a metal base yet. So metal exhaust, part of the metal base. Wow, I can't believe I'm saying that. Very dark window. Uh, it's got a, a, a disc for a steering wheel. That is A-OK -okay for me. But this thing is heavy. Wow. Yeah, I'm so pleasantly surprised with this. Woo! That is awesome. Yeah. Unfortunately, Subaru is not very popular here, so there were a bunch of those in the uh, discount tray. Um, yeah. It's uh, your loss and my gain. That's all I got to say about that. The last stuff we're going to look at were gifts for my buddy JK. I finally was able to meet up with him again because it's been a while since he went to uh, Namak. He prefers to go to real car shows uh, if there's uh, an alternative than uh, going to Namak. Or if they are taking place on the same day, he'll probably prefer a real car show than uh, Namak. But uh, he still collects uh, die cast though. He got me this thing. So this is the Hot Wheels Volvo 850 Estate that someone, he didn't do it himself, but he bought it for me. Someone converted it into a keychain. How awesome is that? I'm not going to use it as a keychain. It's far too nice for that. Although maybe if I one day get me one of these again, I might. But for now, I'm just going to keep it uh, safe and mint. Got me a few... He got me a few Hot Wheels for GT40. I Both of them I did not have yet, so that was a great 2024 release. I think um, this came in white and in blue this year. I probably already have the white one, not sure. But I did, definitely did not have the blue one, which is the nicest of the two. Uh, yeah, very nice livery on there. Uh, and uh, yeah. Very well endowed in the tempo department, uh, mostly due to the fact that uh, uh, with the uh, with the top tempo you can uh, you can have a lot of features done on this one because it's got this very small very small uh, front part. Yeah, nice one. And he also got me this uh, 2019 Ford Ranger Raptor in the HKS livery, also 2024. I think he likes the uh, HKS livery, just doesn't like the, uh, the vehicle much. He got me a uh, Tokmani Eureka, which... Um, Rek, I'm, I think, is, is truck, rig, lorry in Finnish. Uh, Tokmani is a store in Finland, which uh, has a great relationship with Majorette. You can see here, Tok for the Tokmani stores. Um, 2023 packaging date on there. MEN rig. Let's take a look. He already got me one of these. I think this one is no different, but it might be. So I'll need to check that. Uh, yeah, so the box is plastic and opens uh, that way. Let's see, I'm going to use the, uh, the device from the Swiss army knife. There you go, that's how it opens. So 
metal cab, metal chassis. What you see is red is metal, and then it's got the uh, plastic black insert for the axles to hold the axles. Some details on there, smokestack or air intake it is, and uh, door handles and stuff like that. So nicely detailed. Cool. Always like to get these. Store exclusives, or country exclusives. Next one is not a country exclusive. It's the uh, anniversary edition Volvo 240 GL Estate, celebrating 60 years of Majorette. Uh, do not have this one yet. It's in the um, what do you call it? Five pack gift pack. Uh, so I will uh, definitely try to get that gift pack, and uh, and then we'll have. Uh, a uh, possibility to get that out of there uh, but I want to show it loose so I couldn't keep discarded so uh, old style majorette uh, printing on there uh, resembling the packaging of a certain era uh, when this vehicle was uh, on the roads nicely tampoed all around lens headlights so newer version of the old 240 estate that they had. I'll do a comparison when I uh, show the gift back for sure. And then he got me the whole set of these country exclusives celebrating 30 years of Porsche Thailand. The Porsche 911 Carrera S, the 992. And uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different colors. I've uh, Put them in following order of this uh, rainbow here. Uh, yeah, Porsche official licensed product sticker on there. Here's all seven of them. Also 2023 packaging date on there. Um, PO1, so PO for Porsche, probably one, possibly meaning that there might be another set coming, but uh, not sure about that. Uh, these must have cost him a fortune, I think, in Finland. But uh, crazy man as, as he is, he got me the whole set. Which I am very thankful for, of course. This also comes as a gift pack. Um, but uh, I am going to open these up anyway. I'm going to put them in my uh, Porsche collection. Majorette Porsche collection. So they have matching uh, rims that match the uh, body color. Of course, suspension, opening doors, they open nice and wide. Again, take notes, major uh, matchbox moving parts. And uh, yeah, full deco basically, lens headlights, the whole nine yards. Purple is the second one. So matching rims again. Light blue is the next one. Kind of a darker blue set of rims. Maybe I should do it this way. Am I still in the screen? Yes, I am. Orange, kind of a bronzish. A rim color on this. Kermit Green again. Third Kermit Green car in this video. Again, slightly different green on the rims. Of course, they are kind of more shiny than the body color, I guess. Pink. I think the, the rims are most resembling on the on the pink one. What do you think? And then we got yellow. Yeah, the yellow ones, they're not that chromish as the other ones, so they kind of fit very well. Thanks for watching.